الحمد لله رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد أشرف خلق الله أجمعين سبحانك ربنا هديتنا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله جزيل الشكر والتقدير لأستاذي الجزيل المحترم أستاذ الدكتور ياسر أنا كنت أريدي بدأ ما كنتش مسموع بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد أشرف خلق الله أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحانك ربنا هديتنا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هديتنا إليه الحمد لله رب العالمين جزيل الشكر والتقدير لأستاذي العظيم الفاضل النابه الجليل أستاذ الدكتور ياسر رضا طبل آه، الذي يتصدق بعلمه أناء الليل وأطراف النهار ولا يألو جهدا أن يتعلم ويتقدم ويصنع نسخا أفضل من نفسه ويبذل في كثير من جهده وماله في ذلك ثم هو لا يضمره أبدا بل هو على استعداد أن يتصدق بعلمه ل 24 ساعة في أي وقت تسأله طب ايه رايك في كذا طب نعمل ايه طب نسوي ايه هتلاقيه هيقول لك الموضوع من اوله لاخر وما شاء الله وما شاء الله ربنا رزقه ذاكره حافظه لانه يعني يعني ونحسبه كذلك يعني من اهل القران ويعني ان شاء الله باذن الله يبقى في صحبه الشيخ مصطفى اسماعيل والشيخ عبد الباسط في الجنه كما يصحبهم في الدنيا وبيشيرهم لينا يعني فان شاء الله يبقى دايما في صحبه اهل القران وفي صحبه الصالحين من عباده وربنا يزيد علم وصحة وتقوى وحانة كل يوم الفجر يعني لا أخفي سرا أن أنا بدأ لهذا الرجل العظيم النابه يعني المملوء بالعطاء فربنا يزيد يا رب ويكرمه وأنا متشكرة جدا جدا لحضرتك يا دكتور ياسر ونورت الدنيا كلها فضل ياسر أنا سعيد جدا دعوة يا توسط شكرا لك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله As, you, as usual, every week, Dr. Asafa is hosting one of our brilliant and eminent speakers um, I'm glad to introduce our uh, uh, eminent speaker, Dr. Yasser Tob He's a well-known national and international speaker in many conferences all over the world uh, he has a very simple way to deliver the knowledge and the messages very smoothly. Actually, he, was, he is one of the main supporters of our uh, anesthesia, Nufia anesthesia club, and he has a white hands over most of us, actually. Uh, thank you for him to give us uh, uh, his time, because this is not the first time for him, but uh, this is, uh, we are waiting for many times and for many lectures uh, from him. Uh, Dr. Yasser has a lot of uh, credentials starting from the National Cancer Institute in Egypt and ended in uh, uh, Medi uh, Hamad Medical Corporation in Qatar. Uh, he's uh, uh, got uh, the uh, MD from the National uh, Cancer Institute and he has the Arab Board of Anesthesia, European Diploma of Anesthesia, European Diploma of Regional Anesthesia and Acute Pain Management, uh, European Diploma of Pain Medicine. He's currently working as a senior consultant of anesthesia and pain chronic pain management in Hamad Medical Corporation in Qatar, and he is the head of interventional pain medicine and post anesthesia care unit in uh, Hamad Medical Corporation. Uh, now we have a very hot topic and very updated uh, topic about the ultrasound and the airway. Uh, and uh, now, Dr. Yasser, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Sam, and thank you for uh, Dr. Safa, and thank you for uh, all attendees from uh, Monofia um, Anesthesia Club. Um, I'm just very happy and proud to be with you on uh, this beautiful night, the night of Friday. So, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, my presentation today is just touching um, a very new topic uh, about ultrasound because uh, ultrasound invaded our life uh, and all the speciality now using in our life. It's like an eyes for you to see what's behind. And um, thanks for innovation for ultrasound, and thank you for innovation for uh, uh, the science to be there. I, I think some there is a background sound I can't. Uh,
can you mute all the sound? Yeah. Uh, so I don't have any conflict of interest uh, behind this presentation. Uh, and then this is my beautiful city. I hope one day to make a conference there, uh, this Russell Bar, and to invite all of you uh, to, to visit this beautiful place. Uh, first of all, I think there is a background sound. Uh, someone. Dr. Yasser, you can mute the sound. Yeah. My presentation today about um, uh, uh, point of care ultrasound and in, in way, but I'm, I will speak only about the upper airway. I will not touch the, the, the lung and the pathology of the lung that may be touched in another uh, session. And uh, starting with airway anatomy and sonoanatomy, the anatomy, uh, uh, you know, with ultrasound is the practical anatomy. If anesthesia is a practical physiology, is ultrasound practical anatomy whatever uh, uh, airway, regional anesthesia, pain management, and other specialty ICU. Um, uh, here, I just will look for how to see the ultrasound, how to see the structure by ultrasound in normal uh, situation, and also how to assess the uh, tube position and uh, uh, depth. Uh, the use of ultrasound in some emergency situation like cricocyrotomy and uh, uh, tracheostomy, percutaneous tracheostomy or surgical tracheostomy, uh, I will just touching a barrel and bit falls about the, the, the topic and some supportive evidence and home message at the end. I don't know. It's, oh, yes, okay. So, uh, will uh, we'll join us in this presentation, my friend, Dennis Langi. And uh, he come here just to help me in this presentation. So, uh, say hello, Mr. Langi, for the audience and uh, for our professor and colleague. Uh, it is uh, this topic like uh, you asking me to eat and uh, this camel in 45 minutes or 50 minutes. Uh, so I will try to eat as possible as I can. And because of that, I will just make my presentation as long as possible as I can to cover the subject and as short as possible as I can, not to get bored and to fall asleep. Starting with anatomy. <laughs> um, I will look for tracheal anatomy. Trachea is uh, like a, a tube. Um, connected from upper for uh, thyroid or hypopharynx to uh, uh, ended by the carina. And uh, this tube connecting uh, uh, the upper airway just transmitted the, the uh, uh, air or, or uh, oxygen. And, 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 and real, anat real anatomy can look for the trachea starting by cricoid cartilage. And this is the only ring, big ring for the uh, trachea. All the other uh, ring for trachea is not completed behind. And this is connected to thyroid by some ligaments. And uh, because of importance of uh, uh, some opening to this trachea, if it's obstructed from above, or just we need just to make an, uh, uh, checking the tube or all that stuff. So in airway anatomy, we're looking usually that the central or midline is uh, dry, don't have many blood vessels. They have only the thyroid. As, as I'm speaking, uh, practical anatomy. And thyroid usually um, at the level of uh, two to four, sometimes three to four, sometimes one. And because of that, usually we select an um, percutaneous dilatation tracheostomy from one to two or two to three maximum. Second thing, in ultrasound, I can appreciate, I can see the uh, thyroid cartilage, and I know the thyroid cartilage, I can see the trachea ring, and I know the trachea ring, and so I can see the cricoid cartilage, I can see the membrane, thyroid membrane. Uh, in between the uh, carotid and thyroid cartilage. And this is helping me just to make a mark for the difficult intubation or emergency like a surgical airway. Again, the ultrasound can help me just to, to make a block for uh, uh, superior angel nerve when I make a block uh, for the upper airway. Uh, this is, was done uh, uh, land the mark technique, but now can, I can see the corneal and I know that most of the time I don't see the nerve, but I see the greater corneal and I know that the nerve by the anatomy touching this area, I can infiltrate this area. So I can uh, uh, appreciate thyroid cartilage, cortical cartilage, oesophagus, trachea, and I can see all this structure uh, in a dynamic way by ultrasound. Um, again, if we're looking for uh, if we're looking for the uh, the normal anatomy, which is described before uh, in the Bible for anatomy like Gray's anatomy, 
uh, it was dissected only 12 patients and uh, most of the time describes anatomy in anatomical position. And uh, mostly it is a cadaver, it's not a normal dynamic uh, uh, anatomy. So in anatomy, in normal dynamic anatomy, it may be differ a little or, or, or not a little, even sometimes a great difference between the anatomy we study in the university and the anatomy you can see by ultrasound. So here you can see the esophagus posterior to the trachea, but mostly by ultrasound can see in left side of the trachea. And we must look for the dif different anatomy because anatomy like finger brains, like the eye brains, so it differ from one to one. Even for regional anesthesia, for upper airway, you can find a great difference between one and one, and not even one and one, you can find a great difference if you have right and left also. Uh, who, who's this gentleman? This is a craze. Let's make a graze anatomy. It's a Bible of anatomy and dissected only 12 body. And when we use an ultrasound, we make a renovation for anatomy and discover that anatomy is a dynamic science, not a science what you finish long time because there is a lot of variation and we see this variation by ultrasound and many, many studies now running just to make a uh, big study, multi-centric, multi-countries. Uh, it was a 1,200 body to dissect to see. So it is a, a, this gentleman describes a uh, uh, what's called an uh, static anatomy, which is in cadaver, but the real anatomy can different and can make a change all the time. You can uh, make a difference in anatomy all the time. Uh, are you not happy about the describing anatomy? So what I miss, Mr. Lange, I miss that the trachea um, is from 10, 10 centimeter or four inch to five, five inch, six inch, 10 centimeter to 18 centimeter. Half of this distance in, in the neck and half the distance in the uh, chest. Again, the trachea uh, ring about uh, 18 to 22 ring. Uh, so I hope to be happy about that. So uh, why ultrasound in upper airway? Because it's an available technology invaded our life. And this is a very, very rapidly progressing technology like a mobile phone. Now it's very easy. You can buy a very good machine or good probes, uh, $1,000, and you, you can use it for any smartphone around you. And you can discover a lot by the uh, diagnostic and the intervention by ultrasound. So I will not speak a lot about ultrasound advantage. This is portable, shape, technology, no radiation, uh, mobile, can see the dynamic uh, structure. I can see that it can just to give the opportunity to see what's inside the earth without this effort to, for digging. And what's behind the door without opening. And the best thing about ultrasound, which is different from all other modalities of, of imaging modalities, is that he give you all the time what's called mo mobile or just like a movie. Mobile, which is frequency frame, which you give about 7,000 uh, picture by, by um, uh, second. And this is the only modalities which give you an, an, an mobile without hazards if you make a radiation like this. So whatever you have a very big neck and you don't, even you don't have an, an what's called a shoulder, you have a, sorry, you, have a, you don't have a neck like this gentleman, you have a head on a shoulder or you have a, a very long neck and easy for you to do uh, all the procedure. Ultrasound sound can help you because there is a different probe can help you. Some probe giving you deep pictures and some probe giving an, an uh, superficial resolution picture, and some probe give you a, a small sector, some probe give, a, give sector. So selection of the probe is very important and can help in uh, what's called an, an, an obese patient with a heavy neck, and also in a skinny patient with a long neck. But it need like a professional photographer. Some people take a picture and selling for magazine and take thousands of dollars for National Geographic. And some people, take a, a picture and put in the garbage. What's the difference? The difference that how to manipulate your camera, how to manipulate ultrasound. How can you get a good picture? What I mean that if you use a BARTS technique, pressure alignment, rotation, tilting technique. And for my colleague, usually I tell him the teaching for ultrasound, training ultrasound, like you, you're driving a manual car. You need a very good coordination between your brain and your feet and all your body to get the best pictures. Uh, when I tend to start the ultrasound, what I see all the time, it said this is the artery, this is the vein, but I'm looking for the picture. I found the gray, white, and the black pictures. And it's normal because after some time, your eye catching everything. So this is the difference between reality and the ultrasound. Ultrasound, you see a real anatomy. And even in the book, you, you see an arrow, you see an colors for every structure. But in, in, in ultrasound, it's like a negative picture of movie. You, you don't see the real anatomy. So you must accustom for that. So if you're looking for this picture from uh, the left one, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. 
the left one, this one like an, an, an anatomy, anatomy, what you see in anatomy. And the uh, so, uh, uh, left one, right one. And the left one, this is like what you see in the movie, old movie, uh, the movie, the old uh, technology of movie, you want to take a movie, like a negative movie. But you must know this anatomy to know this is lady the same, this lady when you see an ultrasound. So it needs an, a big amount of training to know in, 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 in this area. And again, you must looking for the artifact because not all what you see by your eyes is right. And sometimes there is an existing structure you can't see by your eye, eye except by different manipulation or fine man tuning for the probe. So all the time you must know by anatomy and by ultrasound that there is a mini artifact. And if you're looking for this lady, you can appreciate that they have a muscle, a big muscle. And But if you're looking thoroughly through the picture, you found this gentleman behind here, and this is the only arm of this gentleman. So not all artifact is right, or what you see is right. And sometimes it needs investigation. You know, for, for this picture, they found that the problem in the machine, there is an, uh, an insect in the machine, and everyone take an X-ray, they found the problem in the machine. So, and this artifact can appear also a very common in an upper way. You can appreciate this uh, keratoid cartilage, the biggest one, and keratoid membrane and thyroid is superficial. And this is the area just to make an keratoid to me here. You may, area to make an tracheostomy. But if you're looking this picture to this picture, you can find uh, what's called a keratoid. Uh, sorry, keratoid cartilage here and another one here. And this is what's called mirror image artifact because there is no keratoid cartilage inside the trachea. This is what we know from the anatomy. And if you move a, a probe a little, you will, this will disappear. So all the time looking for the picture and you can see from other side, if you look in this picture, it's totally different when you're looking from other side and this is happened by ultrasound. So the, 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 uh, uh, you must imagine in your brain because you see two, two, two dimension, but you must imagine in your brain, this is a three dimension and the anatomy is fixed, but your, your hand is moving. And sometimes you need more investigation, as you see, uh, but don't believe the Indian and Egyptian move all the time, because I don't know why they put an, uh, lens, uh, the mask in the, in the air and this, uh, 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 you know, the uh, oximeter and the, you know, it's a very different, bizarre shape, and don't believe this uh, uh, Indian and Egyptian movie and show. So, and we are speaking about that because sometimes this machine uh, helping us to predicting a risk and to helping us to save the base, life of the patient and even your life. So a point of care ultrasound uh, uh, in a normal situation, this is facilitating the end of the tracheal intubation and depth of, uh, of the tube to know if it's an endobronchial or not. And also facilitate uh, cricocyrotomy, facilitate tracheostomy. This is why I'm speaking and about the two, two uh, last figures about the emergency. Uh, so this is a normal way. And this, thanks for uh, Taimur. Taimur is uh, our colleague in, uh, in Hamad, is a fellow of uh, uh, Turman Anesthesia and uh, was a football player in Uzbekistan team. And when he retired, just to work as a job of uh, the people who have not, not a, don't have a job, a medical doctor. So thanks for time more. I get all this picture. I get a permission from him, from him. And you can see uh, this is our machine. And this I take this picture and recovery. This is a normal situation. So I will not, not make him an tracheostomy or, or just a boot at you or just to make a critical serotonin. And uh, all, uh, uh, the start with, we start is that like to make an, what's called transverse scanning for the uh, uh, trachea. And I can know every level by appreciated by this ultrasound. So also I can look for some picture and some other structure or just some to helping me in some procedure in longitudinal way. So first of all, <laughs> and when I go for uh, the thyroid, as you see the thyroid, if you want to see the thyroid, you know that you are from two to four uh, trachea ring. So every, every place for the probe give you a different picture. So if I go down, I will lose the trachea. As you see in the picture, I lose the thyroid. If I go up, I lose the thyroid. And even just to go for trachea, don't go through the thyroid because uh, it's a bleeding and is a, a vital structure for us. So you can appreciate every level. And when you look for the thyroid here, you see the thyroid isthmus and thyroid loops. And here you appreciate the air mucosal interface and you can see the artifact in between the trachea ring. Again, this is a Timor picture, thanks for him. And here you can see the trachea ring. And what you see here is the concentric structure is, sorry, uh, concentric structure is, is, is the esophagus here. You can appreciate in the esophagus here and thyroid and uh, uh, this is the trachea. 
And this is very important to look. And this mostly you found it left left side, as I told you. So the parasagittal, sorry, transverse, uh, tilting a little to left side. This will give you and two centimeter above the uh, supraspinal node. You can see this appreciated this and can see it's moving. And this is a oesophagus, thyroid, and trachea. Again. If you go for a different level, for example, above just above the carotid, you found this is a carotid cartilage, a very big big ring for carotid. You can see it and hypopisonic, and you found here uh, what's called air also interface. But if you go a little up, you, the picture will different. You don't see the the carotid cartilage was was like before and see the cricothyroid membrane. And this is a site for cricothyroid. If I go a little up, I, I see the V-shaped structure with the thyroid, and I see the vocal cord. I can examine even for the pre assessment, the vocal cord. I can see the movement for just the medical legal aspect, or there is many nomogram about the to, to predict the difficulty way. I'm going up, I see the hyoid bone, and there is also a nomogram to this, measure the distance between the hyoid bone and the skin to predict the difficulty way. And if you if you put the probe in, in a longitudinal way, or uh, to, you see this picture, this is a big glottis, big space, the strap muscle. And there is many no, now nomogram I will show uh, during the presentation because it was a uh, club meeting and one, two weeks ago and I was a monitor in this club meeting. Uh, that the distance between the skin to a big glottis can assess the difficult way. And this is going with Malambati and crook mclehan uh, 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 score. Uh, looking uh, uh, for longitudinal in a normal way also, I can appreciate many structure. So here you can appreciate it, even you can diagnose many, many uh, tumors or they have a nomogram, but I will not speak about it because there is a blusera of research and uh, arsenal of uh, publication uh, coming in the uh, last few years. So here, if you're looking for longitudinal, I can appreciate many structure. I can appreciate cricoid cartilage, the biggest ring. I can appreciate cricothyroid membrane. I can look in for the superficial thyroid. And this is the side of cricothyroidomy. And can I appreciate also trachea ring with just a small ring. And you can see appreciate it through the longitudinal. But to see this picture, you must be dead on the middle line. Yes, yes. But I will not put for, you know, Mr. Lange, I will not put for Taimur, as I said before, a tracheostomy or just some tube as you need, but his uh, thanks for him all the time. So the indication for uh, 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 our way uh, uh, ultrasound to um, to assess any intubation, and then did that with my, my fellow and resident, I make it in a normal patient. I tell him to put the tube in the to put in trachea, and he can appreciate it in a few seconds. And the study said in nine seconds, but really we found it, and the new study found four seconds, and you can see it in one hour because it's in four to five seconds, less than this, to know that they are in or outside, or I can appreciate it. This is before any other methods, and very easy, very simple, uh, specific 100% in most of the study. Also anticipated of difficult airway if you assess the vision before, but I will not to go this subject. Sometimes you have a patient coming for emergency and the AMS people, emergency people, move with a tube, paramedicals, and they don't know is the tube inside, outside, especially if the patient arrested, you don't have carbon dioxide, the patient will be, you can't hear. So you can assess the uh, tube esophageal or tracheal, or also if you're expecting a, a difficult airway and the, the patient may need an, 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 uh, an, uh, 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 to assess the airway, to make a mark if the uh, going to the worst scenario. So this is study showing is an emergency situation. Sorry, an emergency situation. An emergency situation. Sorry, I don't know these people. Sorry, an emergency situation here. In emergency situations, they found that uh, six to sixteen percent in, in, in emergency uh, uh, settings, they found the tube is esophageal, uh, and it's a very high number because it's done by uh, non-anesthesia people and people from AMS or uh, sorry the uh, 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 emergency or just people for ambulance. Also, and un recognize the uh, tracheal uh, or, or uh, endobronchial intubation even making a devastating complication in mortality and morbidity. 
Um, again, the uh, real time confirmation of the tube uh, is easy by ultrasound, rapid, safe, accurate, and so, so effective and can prevent all this devastating complication. But we need to answer many questions. When you put a tube, first to know where is the tube? It is in trachea or esophagus or elsewhere. Again, the depth of the tube uh, is above the glottis in trachea and right place or just going to main bronchus. And what you see when you put a tube, whatever is right or wrong, what is correct or not correct, and also looking for the depth for the tube. So there is a many common methods and we use it for many, many years. And the uh, first thing it should be me more or less sure to see the tube uh, between the focal part. Unfortunately, in many cases in emergency and uh, difficult intubation, you can't see that. Again, checking the carbon dioxide. Sometimes it's not normal. Sometimes you put it. Uh, Dr. Safa, because I think this gentleman will not stop speaking to me, so I can uh, for a minute. No. Dr. Yasser, you, yeah. you can mute him. You are the host, the main host. Uh, no, but this is, I don't know. Yes, yeah, so no problem. So uh, I, again, the another, another method is uh, carbon dioxide, but uh, in some case of arrest, you don't see carbon dioxide even the tube inside the trachea and carbonated water drinker coming to emergency. And uh, this come for the water tube and soft gas and for many minutes you can see the carbon dioxide. Auscultation sometimes is difficult and uh, for, for us, sometimes I don't know it's uh, transmitted or come from the trachea. And again, in, in a noisy situation, when the patient arrested, sometimes to hear is very difficult. Ultrasound is the best and accurate and 100% uh, specific. And the other methods not used like an uh, X-ray and the other method in, in emergency. Uh, so the situation in hospital, they found that to put a tube away from the carina, two centimeter, is not right as high as has, I have uh, not right in 20% of the people. And bronchial intubation in hospital cases, five to 8% for the tube. And this is can, can go into devastating complication. And up till now, the uh, American Heart Association bought the auscultation standard of care of the tube. But to know that this auscultation can give you a specificity about a specificity about uh, uh, about uh, uh, 60 to 65 uh, uh, percent of all the cases. So if we look for as uh, a common method in emergency, because it may be different uh, from uh, OR, direct visualization and auscultation of the cyst rise sometimes is unpredictable and unpredictable and unreliable. Oxygen carbon dioxide sometimes delayed or the vision arrested sometimes unreliable. X-ray is very late and need a special uh, preparation. Fiber optic, impractical, and especially if you have bleeding and trauma for the patient. So auscultation showing that 60 to 65% only, uh, for it, but not just all sound, you know, that as this gentleman said, yes, uh, that was the loud sound, but I said, I want to hear your, your heart. And sometimes it's very difficult to hear the breathing sound in 40% of the case. So in emergency situation, the situation may be a little different because your job is there to protect your tube. So in emergency situation, as I told you, carbon dioxide monitoring not accurate because most of the vision need an intubation near arrest or to be arrested. Radio is not available all the time, need a preparation. The vision sometimes arrived intubated, need confirmation of the tube, tube outside or inside. And uh, uh, patient not responded as expected after intubation. You need to check why is this not responding like this after intubation. That tube may be uh, in trachea or cervicus or in, uh, one bronchus. And this is come going to this devastating complication if you don't put the in the right place for the trachea. So the barrels about the ultrasound, very scan prior to intubation is very important if the time permit. But if the, the time not permit, you can make it during intubation or after intubation. Abnormal coll collapsed oesophagus means that the tube in trachea except if you have a severe trauma and you go anywhere to the brain, for example. Uh, ultrasound can check the uh, movement of tube and oesophagus or trachea or even subcellular nodes. Bre and the most intubation is very important to check your tube. But the bit falls here if the patient come with severe trauma and anatomical variation of oesophagus or neck tumor uh, or mass, trauma, sometimes calcification in the uh, bone is the enemy, sometimes it's com coming to the enemy. Usually the bone is a friend of ultrasound and regional anesthesia, but maybe an enemy if you have a calcification and you don't see anything behind. 
And I ask my colleague all the time, what's the, uh, sorry, the diagnosis of this case without ultrasound? And I think Dr. Asifa knew because I told before, his, her wife knows the password of his uh, mobile phone. So now I, uh, you are happy, Mr. Lange, and uh, smiling for this joke. So how can you confirm the tracheal intubation by ultrasound? First thing, to see the widening of the tracheal. Uh, second thing, to see the movement of color doppler. When you move the tube inside the trachea or the esophagus, you can see the movement uh, uh, artifact, which are given be, be mosaic shape colors uh, with esophagus, esophagus or trachea. Or you can inject some saline inside the, 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 the cuff of the tube. Uh, you can tell me about safety to inject a saline, but really sometimes you inject insulin below on some tube for laser. And most of the company said no problem if you inject saline to assess and to remove the saline and to put air again. You don't have a problem with that. Uh, tracheal shape changes from like an V-shaped structure to bullet sign, to like a bullet. Absence of the double tracheal sign. If you don't see double tracheal, if you put the, your tube inside the esophagus, you can find another trachea because the esophagus is a collapsed structure. If you make a stinting for him, it will be like a second trachea. So two trachea is bad, one trachea is good. Uh, lung sliding and pulsation and with ventilation. And this is can helping also to show you uh, the uh, depth of the tube. So again, if uh, for this picture, we said here that the esophagus usually collapsed, but if you to put a tube and you found like a ghost sign or double camel hump sign or two tracheal sign, and this is uh, 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 sure that the tube is the esophagus, and this is specific 100%. Uh, and this mini study shown that. Again, you found two trachea is bad, and this means that we can trachea and so forth. I just about your do this video. You want to inject some air inside the uh, cuff, you can see widening of the trachea. It's a very sign. When you put in two, uh, your probe uh, transverse on some signal notes, it's a very sign to see the widening of the tube when inject and, and, and inflating some air. So the tube inside, and I don't see the, anything in the trachea and the esophagus. And this is shows the tube inside. But there is many other signs here. If I inject some air inside, yeah, the, and now I'm injecting air. You see what happens, this is the air inside the injection and it's both acoustic enhancement. And this is the sure that the tube, uh, the cover of the tube and the trachea and the suprasternal notch. Again, sorry. Again, you know that in normal way, Without tube inside, you can see this picture. That the, uh, if you, before the muscle accent, you can see that tube as a the vocal cord is moving, and even after muscle relaxant, it could be like a, a V-shaped structure. The structure will not change, but the uh, uh, vocal cord is stop. But after intubation, you see the bullet sign. What's called bullet sign here. And again, here is this video here, like a bullet, become like a bullet, like bullet sign. You see bullet sign. In this picture, I just return back again for you for this one. Because here, in, especially in pediatric, I can see the tube and I can see the tube depth. In, in adult, it's very difficult to see the tube because the trachea is very thick and you can't see anything down. But, uh, but um, again, here in pediatric, you can see this is a tube and this is a curricular cartilage and you can see what is the depth of the tube. And this is very easy, in, usually easy in pediatric to see all this stuff and can adjust your tube because the trachea is very short and you need an, what's called meticulous manipulation about which is here, very, not a good place, here a good place, you know, in the trachea. And this is, can help you just about it. And this is a bullet sign, it's called bullet sign as the trachea changes to the bullet. And this is a sign that the tube inside. And if you're looking for this uh, big video, and I can concentrate in this esophagus. You know what happened? Bumping of the esophagus during putting the tube. You can see again. This is the tube and the esophagus. And this is another thing. Again, if I put the tube and uh, the tube moving in the esophagus or in the trachea, this will give you like an artifact, mosaic artifact by any mode for ultrasound. So book us uh, an esophageal into tracheal tube. Sensitivity is very high. Uh, specificity is very high. Nine seconds to, to be sure, but some study now four seconds. Noise on dependent, don't depend on the noise like on Cisco and the circulation dependent, very important. And uh, the cones, it need a dedicated provider and machine. You need a training and machine and some facilities. Again, if I put a tube inside, inside that trachea, what I see and the ventilation of the lung, I see the pleura is sliding and moving in a good way. Uh, and this is sure that, that you and you have a good ventilation. But looking for these pictures, 
here. And I see if I go for what's called M mode, M mode uh, mode, I see like an R, uh, barcode here and like a sand here. It's called a uh, 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 sure sand sign. And if you see the waves and the sand, you are safe because you are near the beach. But if you don't see the, the sea, sorry, the, the sand, you have a problem. In this picture is to show the difference. Here, if I put a tube in the uh, right way in the trachea, or in the bronchus, I don't know, but I will show how to know in the bronchus or trachea. You can see sliding movement with ventilation. And here is a difference, movement, non-movement. And also I can see the demarcation of the area which is not ventilated or not ventilated. If I don't find that the lung is not ventilated, so the short diagnosis will be pneumothorax. So sure or not, I don't know, I will tell you later. So now if the lung is ventilated and I don't have anything and the tube put it in the right way, I found that Two lung is ventilated, and I can, if I go for M mode, I see the barcode sign here and the seashore sign, like a sand and barcode. But if you see all the, the, the M mode, like a barcode, this means non moving. Non moving, it will be one of two, but mainly numerous works because it's not transmitted to the lung. So this is a normal when you put an M mode uh, with a tube that you're tube ventilating and you don't have any problem with that. It may be a numerous works. And if you ask me the short pneumothorax, I tell yes and no. No, because if I, I put the tube and right bronchus or left bronchus and I look for I look for the other language not ventilated, I, see, I found the same picture. But the difference, I will show what is the difference. You found some pulsation. So if you see this picture, this is good because you see the sand of the beach and you are in the wave. But if you see all the wave, you are far away from the uh, shore. Uh, for whom the shore. So hey, again, if you look for this picture, this picture like non-moving lung, it may be pneumothorax or maybe normal lung. How can I know? By the pulsation, because usually the air not transmitted pulsation. If the lung have a pneumothorax, you will not find any pulsation. If the lung non-ventilated and have a pulsation, because this transmitted from the heart, and there is no air, because the air is barrier for transmission for ultrasound. So comparison of the technique, lung sliding, not an, so specific, but can give you a very good clue more better than anything else. Uh, uh, for the lung, but the fluids is 100%, you know that the trachea inside, and the specific 99%, uh, uh, and this is this study shown for a second. So intubation, it may be that you uh, uh, putting in the right way or wrong way. If they put the uh, trachea in, and in, in, uh, in, 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 sorry, in, in wrong way or trachea, both an alt trachea and ultrasound, I found that like a single or double comet tail, yeah, or two trachea or one trachea, and I looking for ultrasound for the lung in right way, I found that lung sliding or lung pulsation and pneumothorax, it may be pneumothorax, but lung sliding and pulsation is very important. So can, can I give you scenarios? <clears throat> very sad scenario. I found the lung, the right lung moving and sliding and left lung moving and sliding. What is the mean of that in a translation for the results? The trachea is uh, in trachea, inside the trachea and working in, in a good position. Second scenario, I found the right lung is uh, sliding because it's ventilated and going do doing good. I left the lung, is, I don't find anything. So then it will be in mainstream bronchus. Third scenario, I, I don't find a sliding or pulsation in the right or left lung. This means that uh, uh, oesophagus. So tube position and lung ventilation, there is many study and giving a result about this one. I just will go fast. But uh, I tell you that in American Heart Association guideline up till now, they don't about uh, uh, the ultrasound and uh, the, the biller, one of the biller of it, but just to speak about it, you can use it when you make an uh, uh, you make an uh, tracheostomy or just to assess the airway. And this is what I'm telling you. If I found these pictures, like a total barcode, it may be, as I told you, pneumothorax or non-ventilated lung. How can I know if I see this pulsation? This pulsation, this means a non-ventilated lung that the tube is butted one of the main, main brokers. So again, if you see this picture, the patient ventilated uh, in a good way, and uh, you're looking for ultrasound, you don't find uh, uh, the, you found the barcode, this means pneumothorax, but non-ventilated can appear easily that you have an, uh, a pulsation. Uh, this is pulsation. So if you go for uh, tricosyrotomy or uh, tricostomy, 
And this is an adult tube, uh, mirror image artifact. And I show for you, this is a keratoid. And after keratoid here, you found the keratocyroid membrane and keratocyroid membrane, the thyroid, and this is the area for keratocyroid. And this is a good picture because this comes from a, a kid's a pediatric. So the keratoid cartilage, the keratocyroid membrane, and thyroid. Thyroid is very thick, uh, like uh, treating uh, ultrasound, treating it like a bone. So you don't see anything down. So here, how can you make it? I should show a small video. Uh, just if, if you exhibit a difficult intubation, I just make a mark uh, where is the cricocyroid membrane. It can make it in transverse and longitudinal, and I put it like a target because I may need it at any time uh, 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 to, to if you go for the surgical airway. So more better to make it before if you exhibit it. You can use it or not. And this is the same like for also for uh, for uh, uh, tracheostomule, dilatation with tracheostomy and Birkin needle tracheostomy. Um, I tell you a story. They call me one day about a case of uh, 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 dilation keratocyrotomy or even surgical. They called me one way. They, I wasn't called, just to come running fast. I run fast uh, because the patient have a tracheal stenosis and they will make a tracheostomy for him. This patient have a cancer and make a before uh, 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 block neck dissection and uh, the anatomy is distorted totally. So I tell that, the, and the situation was about 60, 65, and the patient is struggling for life. Uh, for air. So I tell the surgeon, I can put a mark for you in um, four seconds, five seconds, where is the trachea because the anatomy is distorted. They tell me, no, I can I can feel it because there's nothing in the uh, neck now except a few structure. It's okay. So when the, 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 the surgeon feels the area and make a target and open fast by local, and he tried to check and he put a tube and the tube coming with a dirty uh, a tissue and the necrotic tissue from the tube and the patient arrested. After the patient arrested, we put a very small tube, about five, and hardly just going there. And we try to ventilate, and the patient, uh, you know, return back. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the time taking until he put a tube in the right place, 26 minutes. And we're going in many scenarios in this case. So at the end, he's a very polite man and was joining us in one of the conference. Uh, I tell him we must put a protocol for that, we put a protocol, because I can check you, and I can save your life and skip vision life uh, because the vision can be lost if you don't use an ultrasound. And now we're starting to put in the protocol in these cases to make it first before to go for the worst scenario, which have a saturation very low. You can't ventilate, you can't do with the vision, and even sometimes you can't make a surgical airway. Again, uh, I, I show this video. I know some people is boring, but I still have a few minutes uh, to finish. This video is con concise with the tracheal tube here. You can see by, by a video uh, scope that the just is going to the oesophagus. When you go to the oesophagus, what happened? Another trachea here, just another trachea going here. So what he did, he returned back and go to the oesophagus. When you go to the oesophagus, what I see in the trachea, mostly I don't see anything, except some movement, if I feel the cough, if I put an, and an, an, so if you don't see anything, it's more bitter to see that the two trachea. So uh, again, what is the country of this fish? Anyone know? So I show some sign to help you. And now I think you know, this is what's the country of this fish. So, um, uh, Two weeks ago, I was a monitor for one of my residents about airway ultrasound as a predictor for difficult airway and the risk of for a patient not expected to be difficult. And he make a mi no, many measurement and uh, many, uh, and he given uh, what's called a system systemic review for many, many studies and both an exclusion, inclusion criteria. And he found that the distance from skin to hyoid bone can give, be predicting you difficult intubation for a patient not suspected to be uh, difficult. Again, this is a, a, a what's called a conclusion of the study that uh, ultrasound index tests are significantly different between patients with easy versus difficult angioscopy. And this is what's called distance between epiglottis and uh, uh, the skin. And this is a, what's called the hair. And uh, you know that this is a glucera and the uh, index and but still we are still air in the area of infancy of the cell. So what about the evidence about what I'm speaking about? And, and, and so we need an evidence all the time to be unsure about it and do it. But remember that the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence because sometimes there is more study and the, sometimes it's an ethical study, but just waiting for, for more study and evidence. Uh, this is what's called true study, uh, what's called a trachea rabbit ultrasound examination and showing that he can discover the, the, the uh, uh, subjective vision very easy and very fast. 
and sensitivity, as he said, about 100%. Again, there is a pilot study about uh, accuracy of confirming intratracheal tube and discover that 100% to discover it. Uh, again, another uh, study ultrasound for airway management and evidence-based review for emergency clinician. And this is 2020. And conclusion came, airway management is a core skills and emergency department. Uh, point of care ultrasound can be a valuable tool ranging from a reassessment to the dynamic ricocyrotomy to tracheostomy and can help to save a life observation. Uh, in American uh, 2022, an American uh, Society of Anesthesiologists Practice Guideline for Management of Difficulty Way, really he don't speak about what it in the guidelines, but he speak a lot about it. If you want to make a ricocyrotomy or to check the tracheostomy, you can use uh, uh, landmark technique or focus and focus more accurate. Ultrasound evaluation of the airway and AD and visibility study. And they found that, I just will give you the last word. Future investigation might focus on ultrasound evaluation for our airway to determine whether the ultrasound can predict a challenging or abnormal airway anatomy and parallel endoscopy to help you to put a tube in the right way. Uh, uh, also, there is a called what's called an, uh, another study, 2016, role of our, our airway ultrasound in uh, airway management. And, uh, uh, Airway ultrasound is useful in critical air patient in airway because if important, and this is probability, non-invasive, safe, cost-effective, and reversibility, and the accuracy, which near 100%. And this is encouraging the people to more, more study about it. Uh, also, many, many study, many, many study, but I just will come to this study. This study, sorry. This is study showing something very, very, very interesting. And uh, ultrasound for anesthesia, present, present, and future. And they speak about for anesthesia, for all the topic, for all the subject, airway, and everything, and from diagnostic to, uh, uh, to invasive procedure to uh, uh, showing about everything. And they said, uh, we believe that ultrasound can be a third eye that help in the performance of previously blind procedure. And I think in Canada now that uh, if you do procedure without ultrasound and make a complication, you can be suspended your license for one year because the, the philosophy is there, if I give you two eyes, why don't use it? Uh, again, allow discovery of many hidden spaces to uncover by mystery. Some species will just get it like this and have a mystery. And he said at the end soon, me, we may need to carry portable ultrasound around their neck instead of the scope. And this is happening now. I see many young physicians just have an, um, uh, a cystoscope uh, around the, uh, sorry. I don't know, it's not moving. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I said that it, uh, it will release the scope, especially with the technology. And, and uh, you know that this man is happy and jumping, but this man is not me. Um, at the end, because I, need, I see some vision become, uh, some FTD become boring about the presentation. I give you this scenario and this case report published uh, uh, 2020. Uh, just the fact, point of care, uh, ultrasound for our airway. Um, it is a 72 years old woman presented to emergency department uh, in cardiac arrest. It was not difficult, like obese and short neck. She was intubated prior to uh, uh, arrival from MS people, this is paramedical, not a uh, physician. The pre-hospital team stated that the intubation was very difficult because the patient difficult intubation. The capnography don't demonstrate a good waveform. They are unclear, unclear if this is a tube on the tracheal intubation location or bore perfusion because the patient arrested and no carbon dioxide came. You wonder if that you into the tracheal tube in correct position. What you did at the, what you do at the time? You put an an uh, ultrasound transverse view and you found this picture: two trachea, one trachea here, one trachea here. So this is diagnosis is surgical intubation. I know that the time is squeezing and uh, sorry for. Uh, uh, giving a uh, long time for the presentation and some people is boring and Mr. Lang is very happy because I'm leaving. And at the end, I give you this um, a, a message to home and this is my sweet conclusion. The airway ultrasound are summarized as follow. 
prediction of difficulty way, confirmation of the endotracheal emplacement and ventilation, prediction the side of the tube, and there's many running study for many, many things. We don't know it, about it, and the, the future is the bright, the future bright for ultrasound, like to make an endotracheal tube uh, uh, positioning and tracheostomy and to check the tube position and uh, even cricocyrotomy, assisting and the guiding for proper percutaneous uh, the dilated uh, tracheostomy and the cricocyrotomy. Um, but it needs a long journey of training to be a professional because it's an emergency situation. You can't be trained in a human. So you need some simulation, some training, uh, because uh, the time is uh, the factor here in life of patient. And many, many questions still not answered uh, about the what is the best uh, method to use an ultrasound? What's the best uh, time for uh, uh, using it, uh, using pre-operative, post-operative? We need many, many questions to be answered by study because no, 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 no one fit all. So it need an, uh, uh, some, some study to show the debate and the gray zone of everything. Uh, I, I, I can see in the future, in the horizon, that the ultrasound soon will replace the scope. And for me, I don't use a Cisco for a long time. I use an ultrasound and many, many junior staff doing that. But still, we're still in the infant, infancy of research and we need more study to, to approve or to, to disapprove what I tell you now. Uh, and I hope next year or just this year, we don't have COVID anymore for restriction because it make my, our life hell. Why, why you're sad like this, Mr. Alangi, because of uh, COVID, it's okay. And I hope for, for uh, this, uh, to give you a chance because some people was distant raining uh, just to open the computer, especially if you can see me hour. But really, if you if you if you stay and even you don't understand a lot, you can understand a lot next time, because uh, you know life uh, uh, never stop learning because life never stop teaching. Um, and thank you very much for attending uh, the presentation. And uh, sorry, Mr. Langi, because I was running very fast and you came late here, struggling for that. Uh, question and answer. Um, and this is my email and my phone if you need question and answer. No, 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 no. No, Mr. Lang, you will not answer anything. I'm just speaking about the question and answer for me. Thank you very much for attending and uh, sorry for uh, giving more time. Um, Dr. Uh, Safa, tell me uh, you are free handed to take a time. Sorry for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank Yasser. You, Dr. Yasser. Your, Thank you. Yeah. A million thanks, Dr. Yasser. Very informative lecture, uh, highly informative, based upon uh, practical and knowledgeable uh, person, Dr. Yasser, my great professor. Uh, please, with him, I will have uh, just yeah. a question, and you will continue. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, okay, go ahead. After, after your valuable lecture, Dr. Yasser, the role of ultrasound can help me more in in anticipated difficult airway or in unanticipated difficult airway, which is uh, more um, valuable to have uh, uh, the role of ultrasound? Um, really, this is a difficult question, but it can help you in every way because there is many study about, you know, this, this study, which I monitored two weeks ago about the ultrasound use in difficult airway in anticipated difficult way to be difficult. So the patient is not difficult at all, but this is our problem, you know, this is the vision of our problem. If you anticipate difficulty, there is no difficulty. If you anticipate difficulty, the vision is ready and everything is ready. So I don't have a difficulty, but the problem when you go for an easy patient, long neck and um, Yes. Uh, uh, you put a tube, you don't see, you put a langoscope, you don't see anything. This is a problem. So the ultrasound can help you in two cases. And the study, this study I monitored two weeks ago about that, the patient looks like it's very easy by other methods. And going for, uh, found this difficult langoscopic view, or I can't put a tube. But it can help you in, in the two, the two things, especially if you go in rush and put a tube and you are not sure in it. So I just bought the, uh, when I make it with my resident, I just, oh, our fellow, I bought the uh, ultrasound on the sobre signal notch left side, I, he bought it you. And very, I can tell him in two seconds, three seconds, you are right or not right, that's it. If I found yes. double trachea, it's bad. If I don't found that trachea, you are good. Yes. So it can use on the two, but we need an, as I told you, we need a study to show which is more, more um, accurate and more specific for the patient. And this coming was uh, within few years because the research is starting uh, very soon, you know, 10 years in uh, age of medicine is not a uh, long time. Okay, 
of course, you uh, you suppose that uh, ultrasound uh, have a valuable role in telemedicine. Of course. Yes. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yes. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Yasser, for your informative lectures. This is, as usual, we are expecting that from you every now and then. Um, it's a very hot topic, actually, and uh, there is a lot of um, uh, debates about uh, this. And uh, nothing is settled till now, I think, about the, the, the use of ultrasound in airway uh, management. Uh, and as you said, it is not uh, actually in, in the uh, ASA in 2022, it's not. Uh, uh, put in the guidelines and new guidelines uh, regarding the airway uh, management. Um, uh, actually, I, ha I, I have a comment um, with the use of ultrasound in emergency patients about to uh, arrest or arrested or ready to detect the 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 uh, the tube inside the trachea or not. Uh, you know, this situation is uh, not a uh, normal situation, and CBR was running and chest compression was going on. Is it pract practical to check the, the, the airway by the people in the scene, uh, by the ultrasound to check is it inside or not? I think it is uh, impract uh, impractical. Uh, uh, as, uh, as we know, the, the, the ultrasound uses an operator dependent procedure. You need a lot of experience to detect it. Uh, are you agree with me or not, Dr. Yes, sir? I, I agree and I don't agree. First thing, uh, because uh, Intubation is uh, uh, physician dependent. What I mean, it may be and difficult for you and not difficult for me. And this yeah. is the first one. But uh, you know, uh, what is the substitution to know that the tube inside? This is the less invasive and very easy, very simple. Just put an brew. I think this is more practical than other other methods. What is the other method? To hear, to 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 listen for the lung. It's sixty five percent. And you know, if you put an uh, during during ventilation or just uh, during CBR. And the sound everywhere, you, you can't hear. And again, if you put the uh, rope is uh, uh, five seconds, five, 10 seconds, not, not, this will not give you any problems with an ultrasound because you make, make many things. So it is practical and done, and we don't feel find any problem with that, you know? But at, at the and time it's I done, have, you know? If you know, if the chest compression is going on, I have to, to suspend this chest compression to check it. No, no, that's a, don't suspend anything. This is, you don't need to suspend anything. You don't need to suspend anything. And this is okay. the value, value of ultrasound. Don't do, so, need just to suspend anything. The trachea, so the signal notch is away from the cyst. You can do it okay. as you do the tube. <laughs> the tube is even more invasive and even many, many things invasive. If you put fiber optic, it needs training and the stuff. If you put an X-ray, you know, but this okay. is the easiest way. I know this is a challenge in every way if, for every method, but this is the least method which you have a challenge in for, for uh, to put a tube and to see, check the tube. Yeah. Okay. And uh, as you said, that uh, the the ultrasound is now replacing the stethoscope, and the, we should have an ultrasound probe around our neck. Actually, for me myself, I have a handheld handheld uh, probe ultrasound, and I'm using it all uh, all through during my uh, um, uh, the the OR uh, time. Uh, apart from using in the regional blocks and the vascular, we add the airway assessment also, as you said. Yes. Uh, so it's very, very, very interesting. Um, uh, I thing... can tell you, Dr. Osa, I'm sorry, I can't tell you that there's a survey 2016 about what is the percentage of physician, all type of physician, not just anesthesia, using ultrasound for any part of uh, their uh, diagnosis or intervention. They found in 2016, 85% of the uh, survey, people surveying using ultrasound. I think this is increasing in 2022. So yes. this is an you are right. You are right. And, you, and you know, the, the use of ultrasound itself in the airway assessment or management, it started in the early 20s, 2003 yes. or 2002. So it's 20 yes. years from, from the starting. So yeah, we are talking about yes. something that's not, actually it's not uh, new, but it is updated yeah. every now and then. Uh, uh, I, 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 if you let me to add something, we can use the ultrasound yes. also to detect the the vocal cord uh, movement or to assess the vocal cord after thyroidectomy because you know yeah. uh, uh, is it uh, uh, right or yeah but you know that uh, if uh, really i have a, a just a remove a lot because ultrasound i found a book in ultrasound and now in airway i found about 1300 beaver 
So what I'm speaking only in normal and emergency, but we can use it in many, many ways. You can assist yeah. the vocal cord. I assist uh, usually vocal cord. I have a patient just tell me that we can say what, and she can't speak and surgeon tell her that it will be okay, but I found paralyzed cord for it's coming yeah. my yeah. clinic. So uh, you can use it in, in many, many things, in lung things, in, you know, but just I concentrate it in two things because the topic is like a camel. So I eat a, bar, a small part of the camel, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And you know, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Samir Al Kafrawi also has a, a, a comment. Uh, it is, Welcome, uh, Dr. Samir Al Kafrawi, the, our yeah, Dr. Samir friend. is my colleague Welcome. and my friend also. Yes. Welcome, Dr. Samir Al Kafrawi. Welcome. Dr. For uh, my Dr. Samir, also. I, invite I, him, you know, Hussein. Invite him. Invite yes, Dr. him. Samir, you can, Dr. Dr. Samir, you can ask your, your question by yourself if you want. Welcome, Dr. Samir. Dr. Samir. I think uh, he uh, needs Dr. someone Samir. to open for it. Okay, uh, uh, Dr. Samir, he said that yes. He, he, he... Yes, welcome, Dr. Asafa. Uh, welcome, welcome, Dr. Yasser Tawam. My, my friend. Our dear friend. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you for, the, for this informative uh, lecture. Uh, uh, my only comment, uh, when I first time to hear about uh, uh, this topic, this very good topic, Taban, uh, but uh, uh, I revised my career 20 years ago. Uh, actually, we had a very big problem with the insertion of double human tube during a neurosurgery uh, as a tool for uh, lung isolation. So uh, I'm asking about, uh, yeah, did Dr. Yasser try to uh, uh, confirm the uh, uh, the excellent uh, uh, insertion of this uh, double human because uh, you know we started insertion of double human by blind uh, techniques uh, 15 or 20 years ago uh, on the last uh, uh, 10 years uh, we introduced the fiber optic uh, and actually i find i find now uh, uh, i was uh, uh, now realizing that the ultrasound will be better and less invasive than using the uh, fiber optic uh, in the insertion or the confirmation of the insertion of the uh, double human tube. Uh, uh, thank you for this lecture and uh, hearing uh, the comment of Dr. Yasser. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Samir. Um, uh, you know that to, to, to speak about something to be valuable for uh, for um, practice is totally different from valuable for research. Uh, I found many people uh, speaking about it, but still not in the stage of uh, to make a practice. Uh, it will not change my practice now, but it may be coming in the future because there is an even fiber optic with ultrasound inside. And there is some machine just can giving you a, a very good clue, but still the trachea is a dark area to see inside. It may be showing that the tube inside the trachea. It may be showing that uh, the, the ventilation is right or wrong, but it is not a common practice. I have I have already many, many studies showing that, but um, it can help you, but we need to know the specificity and and, and, and the specific or not, and what, how much is specific for uh, to, to do that. I'm telling you, in the future, you will find something like this, as you said, because uh, we are looking for something is not an invasive all the time. And uh, there is a running study, but as I told you, this is at about 10 years. Uh, you know, as Dr. Sam said, this uh, started very early, but the curve jumping in 2010, 19, so 10 years in the age of medicine is very little because if we, even there is many study for 100 years, 200, 200 years about some, some topic. So in the near future, I'm sure what we said now, it will be an fact. Uh, Dr. Habiba Muhammad has a question. I think it's the same question that the ultrasound has any role in endobronchial intubation for lung isolation or not? I think- uh, know, As I told you, you can, uh, as, as a rule, as, as I told you, uh, you, you can check the, the depth of the tube. You can check uh, it's right or long by even lung ultrasound if you found a pulsation. Yeah. Uh, this is non-ventilated lung, if, but still, this is not accurate as uh, fiber optic, and sometimes not practical uh, like fiber optic. It may be in the near future, it may be different. And that, because I found many studies showing that, many study, but still not in the stage of practice, stage of, of research. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yes, sir, doctor, we have doctor... Marwa Lahouni. Marwa Lahouni, yeah, yeah. Dr. Sam, I'm so sorry for the yes. interruption. Okay. Welcome, Marwa Lahouni. She asked about the use of ultrasound in W. Welcome, Marwa. Welcome, yeah, again, the same question. 
<laughs> yeah, the same I, question, and I, I think you, you answered it already, Dr. Yezer. Yes. Okay. Yes, thank Marwa. you. If you have another <laughs> question, Maybe as a new Marwa, update yeah. next year, it will be the, the, all this presentation is changed, you know? Yeah. And when I make it again, I'm just looking for the literature for update. Sometimes I change the, the presentation totally, if we have an evidence. Yeah, okay. Uh, Dr. Nagy Negm, uh, welcome, Dr. Nagy. We miss you. Welcome, Dr. Nagy. 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 He's, he's asking about the simplest way anatomical land to start from to reach trachea. Anatomical way for ultrasound? The, the, simplest, the simplest way, yes, using an ultrasound to start from to reach the trachea. Uh, what, usually, what? usually we started, we started in the suprasternal notch. Or this is like a protocol put it in some people, but not an uh, agreed protocol all over the world. But you started from suprasternal notch and you're going up. And uh, as a routine technique, and some protocols just uh, starting sobre signal notch, go a little to the left to see the esophagus trachea and to see the carotid two sides or the visual two sides. And you're going up, up, up until you found the uh, biggest uh, cricoid uh, cartilage and above it, the uh, cricothyroid membrane, above it, the thyroid. Oh, and again, to go longitudinal. And longitudinal, you can see the, the trachea ring and you see the cricoid cartilage, thyroid cartilage, cricothyroid membrane. This is an easiest way to go for difficult intubation because you know the approach for everything is different from one to one cases, but uh, many, many protocol is founded, but this is the easiest way and I do it. I do it in my practice. I just go for uh, 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 midline or just to the left uh, transverse uh, uh, suprasternal notch two centimeter away, and I go up until I see the old structure, and I go longitudinal after that. Okay. Uh, I I have another question, Doctor Yasser, if you let me. Uh, are, are you doing in in the uh, in the uh, OR in the operating room? Uh, are you doing uh, assessment or in the anesthesia clinic? Are you doing a say, are, uh, airway assessment with the ultrasound? Is it routinely you are doing or just uh, in case? No, no, this is what I was, was speaking of Dr. Nabil. Uh, Dr. Nabil concerned about our uh, airway, uh, sorry, difficult mm -hmm. intubation and uh, many cases I shown in the conference. I was uh, speaking in a conference about one month ago and I think Dr. Uh, Safwa was sharing this uh, in the conference. And uh, I tell Dr. Nabil, uh, I give him a message that uh, sooner, you agree or not, it will be an ultrasound machine to assess many of your patients, as you said, for medical legal aspect, for assessing difficulty. And uh, Dr. Nabil started to be and convinced about it because uh, we, we show many study now for a uh, big club meeting every way about ultrasound. This is the second one. And there is meta analysis, uh, review articles and randomized control study about uh, some stuff. So soon, inshallah, will be in, in our clinic as a routine. Please so, so, Dr. Yasser, you, uh, uh, as we know, in the assessment of the difficulty of airway and unexpected, unexpected uh, uh, difficulty, we are we are measuring some index the, like this from the skin to the epiglottis, skin to the hyoid bone, yes. or something like that. So, in case of we uh, expect difficulty by these measures, what what mm. is the best what is the best uh, 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 procedure uh, uh, you want to do to intubate such patients? Uh, you know that up till now, as I show in this paper I show for you, up up till now, even for this is a meta-analysis and uh, uh, you know that the study was bizarre shape, you know, even if the critic key for the study, you know, the exclusion, inclusion criteria different from one to one and difficult to, what is the difficulty way and how many time uh, to, to do, to, to, to tell me this three time, four time. So, up till now, you know, we don't have an, 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 an fixed evidence about use all this issue. But they found if this all this measurement is the easiest measurement or just from the skin to a big lotus, they can give you a clue that, but it's, it not, you, you, this study you can't depend on it because of very little number. And uh, the exclusion criteria and the exclusion criteria was different from study study. So you can depend on it. But whatever you found, if, if you have a fixed nomogram now, 
And this is comparable to Malembet score because whatever you do, you do for assessing the airway, uh, this is not expecting airway. In many cases, uh, we are anesthesia and we are working. We find a patient very difficult for bariatric surgery for whatever. And when you put a cystoscope, uh, we found it very easy. Yes, you are right. And you expect it's very difficult. And uh, so whatever you use for score, this is put, put in, in data on the box. You're collecting the data. But whenever you expect it because the safety of the patient and they don't, don't need to be put it in the trap, prepare for the worst scenario. So whatever you expect, put an ultrasound, make a cricocyrotomy, uh, mark, and just using a different type of video langoscope, whatever you you just, you must start with, with a weak fiber optic or whatever, or a, a weak fiber optic. So this is according to expectation. Of, uh, so so many 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 modalities. Even the guidelines, the guide, most of the guidelines don't depend on uh, for solid evidence. And because of that, it change every day, every, every time. This is a depend on uh, um, our opinion of the expertise because you can't make a study. You can't make a study in, to, to send a patient, a uh, person from parachute when one for or without parachute to see if it will die or not. Yes, so yes, usually right. it depend on animal study, which is not reflected to human study and reflected to uh, uh, expert opinion. And because of that, every five year, four year, four year, it changes change something when they found uh, what's called evidence. So not a good evidence, for most of the guidelines, the person uh, opinion, and again, because of that, you can find difficult, uh, uh, different uh, guidelines from um, North American to American, to uh, to um, European, to German, to Scandinavian countries. Yes. So up yes. till now, if you expect a difficult innovation, uh, whatever you did for the patient to see if his life is good, if you are yes. mastering the fiber optics, start by a weak fiber optic. If you have an uh, uh, what's called advanced lens scope. Uh, uh, like a video lens scope, we have many types and uh, very good. You can use it if you master it, but don't uh, try something you don't uh, use it in a difficult situation. You will kill the patient. Ah, yeah. So you 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 have to deal with what is you are familiar with. Yes. 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 Uh, Doctor Karim Mechimer has uh, also this repeated question: the role of ultrasound and assessment of vocal cord movement after uh, thyroidectomy. I think we answered this question before. Oh, not just after thyroidectomy, you can assess everywhere for medical yeah. aspect. You have yeah, an other for, uh, yeah. yes. Pre and, and because post. sometimes it's paralyzed before the operation, you know, you need to yeah. assess in the, in the, and yes. to write that in the document. You know? Yes, yes, yeah. you are right. Um, any more question? I think um, no more question. Tura Safa. Um. لا 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 يعني خلاص يعني بصراحة أنا مش عايزة طبعا أين طبعا مش ممكن يعني لكن يعني كان very simple. I'm just have a one word before to finish. Ultrasound is the future of medicine, the future of many things, and all of our innovation started like a military thing and going to be a civilian thing. So whenever you are a doctor, just to try to learn ultrasound because it can, can save your life and life of the patient in many times, not just for that. And it can please, help uh, your Dr. patient. Yasser, tell, uh, tell them, please, about your case with, uh, of atrial myxoma, please. I, I, yeah. I will, I, I'd like you, to- You, you know that uh, it was a very interesting case. I'm just telling you yes. this fact. Uh, it happened yes. to me about uh, many years ago in Saudi Arabia. I have a patient, uh, you know, that I like ultrasound, so I just work with transfusional echo and for non cardiac anesthesia. So the cardiac anesthesia is very professional than me, but I'm looking for the big, big pathology. Big pathology mean, 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 make a big change for the patient. So I have a patient uh, just for uh, QRB, uh, resection of prostate, and this patient and um, uh, telling me in the assessment, but I don't catch it. Um, uh, the patient just asked him for general anesthesia. He don't like spinal or general anesthesia. And uh, you know that he told me, ask him how, how many below you, you, can, you can tolerate for sleeping. He told me, uh, I don't like below. When I, I just put a below and there is a below, when I sleep, I get suffocated. I get a like, sense of uh, dying. But uh, just I put my feet up and my head down so I can sleep good. So it was a very strange for me, first time to, 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 to hear about it. So in the operation, I discover what I discovered for this patient. Uh, the, the blood pressure of the patient, I started with him, general anesthesia. And uh, during that procedure, the surgeon told me that, can you put head up, a little up? 
I don't found a blood pressure for the patient. The patient blood pressure can go 40 over 20 second uh, one, for, I make an invasive for him, a blood pressure uh, 100 over 50 and make, making a blood pressure like this. And I discovered something else. When he's hit down, the blood pressure improved. So what I did, I, mean, I don't know what is that. I bought a transfusion echo and I found immediately, this is a, a left atrial myxoma. He went the head up, just closing the valve and no, 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 uh, hemodynamic about to be jeopardized. And when he hit down, just pushing here from the uh, valve and the patient improved. And I discovered this why by, by fiber optic. I tell him about this and he just went for to make an operation and come and thank me again. But this is a very strange for me, this first time for me. So every day you learn something, especially from your patient. So ultrasound everywhere. You know, and I have a presentation also about uh, ultrasound for non-cardiac anesthesia. I have many cases, uh, some cases in my, my institute and come some cases from outside. And, but uh, he saved your life all the time. And I have many, many story about uh, uh, the, the, the patient saved his life by ultrasound. Even for regional anesthesia, I discovered something else, not just to make a block. Yes. And, uh, Maru, and, uh, has uh, Marwa, Marwa asked a question again, Dr. Yasser. Yes. She asked about, uh, can the ultrasound define the level of, uh, uh, in case of tracheoesophageal fistula, can be used yeah. and define the site, the site of uh, fistula by the ultrasound? Uh, the problem with ultrasound, really the problem with ultrasound, whenever you put the, 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 the tube in the trachea, you don't see the tube. But there is indirect marker to assess the level of the tube. The, where is the tube? In one bin bronchus or in the trachea? So yes. in other methods, this is about the ventilation. So uh, we have, I, I have, I see, I see a study from Korea. Uh, because the Korean is very good, you know, far, far, Asia, far Asia is very good, but not truly like an American Hollywood and stuff like this. And I show a study showing that it can help a lot. But as I told you, still in the infancy, of research and they need people to do that, to, to make a protocols and to make a study, just to just people and anesthesia community. I know that most of the anesthesia community now just to try to bring the evidence for us. But, uh, you know, still in the, I, I, I found a paper on, uh, in, uh, uh, from Korea. It's very, very, very fascinating paper because uh, the ultrasound can assist that because the pediatric patient, because the character of the tissue, the ultrasound wave can, go inside as I show you that you, and it can help, it can help a lot, but it's still not an, uh, something for practice without a training, without an evidence. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, and uh, to know something about everything is better than know everything about only one thing. One thing, yes. yes. Of course. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Yasser uh, for this um, marvelous uh, uh, night, scientific night. Uh, hopefully, uh, you will join us uh, more and more, and course, we are waiting for uh, for a lot of uh, of uh, knowledges from your experience. And we are actually you, we will, actually uh, we are great to have you this night. Thank you, Dr. Yasser. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Dr. Yasser. Thank you. Dr. Yasser. Thank you. 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 Thank هنستنزف كل المعلومات اللي عند حضرتك ان شاء الله وان شاء الله يبقى لنا باذن الله في اوجست لقاء وان شاء الله حضرتك تشرف المنوفيه اول ما تنزل مصر باذن الله في اخر يوليو ان شاء الله على راسنا من فوق وانا متشكره جدا الحاجه الوحيده اللي انتم بتاخدوا منها ما بدل... العلم لا يستنزف الحاجه الوحيده اللي تاخدوا منها بتزيد هي العلم <تصفيق> فما فيش استنزاف ان شاء الله <تصفيق> ربنا يكرم حضرتك بكل الخير خيرين الدنيا والاخره يا رب شكرا لحضرتك شكرا, شكرا لكل الاتنديه على الليله الجميله دي فعلا فعلا محاضره رائعه ربنا يخلي حضرتك يا دكتور ياسر ما يحرمناش منك ابدا شكرا وسام هايلي بريزنت اول جريت مودريتور يا حاجه جميله ربنا يحفظكم جميعا يا رب اللهم امين شكرا ثانك يو ثانك يو دكتور صفاء دكتور ياسر ثانك يو فيري ماتش ثانك يو فور السلام عليكم السلام عليكم السلام عليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته مع السلامه مع السلامه السلام شكرا جزيلا